that the Office of Special Affairs of the Church of Scientology is trying to get some kind of line into me. A few short weeks ago, a journalist showed up and asked to interview with me. There is no journalist that shows up without calling ahead. You just ring someone's door and think that you get an appointment? We thought that was strange. And anyway, I have a gate at the front gate she was not let in. And then, two, three days ago, a person who has been outed as an officer of special affairs spy and operative, completely outed in multiple publications, asks from asked to be connected to me on LinkedIn. Hmm. It was beyond strange. But I ignored it. Easy come, easy go, kind of. And then, yesterday, a girl shows up at my gate with an injured or a baby bird. I, I, I'm well known in the Los Angeles area as bird rescue. That's just a hobby of mine. I've done it for 20 years. I've become an expert in uh, bird rescue. And basically, I rehabilitate or raise the baby bird and then I release it back to the wild. That's just a, a hobby, a passion. There's no money involved, it's volunteer. And she comes to the gate and it's strange. Jeff firewalls me. You're rarely gonna get me at the gate, ever. But they talk, and she knows, she knows about my videos, yet she claims that she's been in the church 33 years, and it's all better now. She has this pitch Oh, things are different, and it's it's so good. She's on survival rundown. That means you look at that wall and you walk to that wall and you pick up a book and you pick up. This is uh, uh, auditing that was originally devised for heavy drug addicts, which they now put OT8s on in the hamster wheel to recycle them back down. And Jeff lets into her. He says, we're former Scientologists. We're not, we're, we're, we're not Scientologists. In fact, David Miscavige is the suppressive person in your group and used Jenny DeVock's language. He's committing continuous present time overts. And she said, well, I haven't experienced that. Give me an example. And Jeff said, he paid $10,000 a week of Parishna tax-exempt money to hire private investigators for 18 months to stalk and spy on his father with instructions to embed feign fake friendships, read his email, tap his phone line. And in spite of all this, the reason I'm telling you all this and feeling it's an OSA spy is a normal Scientologist would have said, I'm taking the bird, I'm done, thank you, I'm out of here. Or, here's the bird, I don't want to hear any more, sayonara. But she wants to see me next week to release the bird. She wants to talk to me. She still asked to see me, and she very much wanted to come in and look around. So, I have a strange journalist show up. I have an incredible long duration OSA operative who had lunches forever with Paulette Cooper under the guise of being a journalist. 
when he was getting data from her and reporting to Osa, he now, as of a few days ago, wants my friendship? Let me tell you how the church operates on something that has not been previously disclosed. The church embeds spies here, there, and everywhere. Every group is infiltrated. Every group is watched, and every word you say on the internet, whether it's a secret group or closed group, whatever, eh, Osa is in there. They compulsively have to spy. And you sometimes wonder what spiritual group telling you they're going to make you go higher spiritually and achieve the kind of nirvana and special advanced state of Zen. What entity do you know that at the same time needs to spy as if it's CIA, FBI infiltrating. What? Spiritual and espionage all in one mix? <laughs> so I feel they're trying to get their leg in the door to see me. And I said I was going to explain an OSA tactic. And that is when they have a spy and they get some data, that is called covert data. They can't publish it, even if it's a piece of titillating something. They can't because the spy would be blown, the cover would be blown. Because if you only told one person and it suddenly appears on the web, the cover of that spy is blown. So, oh, so Officer Special Affairs have to convert covert data into overt data. And the way and how they do it is they get this leaked so someone writes a knowledge report and another person sees the knowledge report and it goes up. So there's convoluted passageways done to make overt data to make covert data over it. I will, I will tell you what they did. Over data to covert data. Let, let me just tell you. They reported to the Los Angeles Animal Control. I'm passionate about animals. Strong, strong love. In fact, when I left the church and I was bleh, animals were my therapy. I believe I became sane because I got into animals and helped so many animals. It was absolute therapy for me. So they tell animal control that I'm punishing and being cruel to my animals, torturing, <laughs> torturing animals. And animal control showed up with their badge and they said they were embarrassed. They said, you know, we get these reports and sometimes it's a neighbor and they're just trying to rattle on it, rat, rat on another, because do you have any neighbor that's after you? Because he looked at the report and it was so inflammatory and it was so exaggerated and it was so over the moon that he, he, he knew that it was horseshit. He didn't even come in. We said, ah, oh, the Church of Scientology, ah, the Church of Scientology. <laughs> and then... In 48 hours, the health inspector of Los Angeles, a health inspector showed up. The report was that I live in such a pigsty that I could be a health hazard to the entire neighborhood, could go down with the plague and typhoid. I have rats running around 
and uh, rats droppings from six weeks piling up and this is deadly for the for the, for the neighborhood again the report was so over the top the health inspector wouldn't even come in to do an inspection and the same question was Karen have you got some <laughs> someone after you so we explained the Church of Scientology and my lawyer Ray Jeffrey wrote a wonderful letter to the city and the city of Los Angeles um, the, the, I, I'd like to show you the second letter where the district attorney's office said, you know what, we've red flagged 1935 Serrano. We won't let the Church of Scientology hyperventilating hate letters reporting you waste the time of city personnel coming to your house. So that ended that. Now, why did they want to do this? Surely they didn't think that I would shake and tremble with fear at ludicrous report. Why did they do this? They thought if they could get some sight, a citation, the covert attack they did on me could become overt. So here's the principle. They mock up some deadly slime and slur and then try to make that over by getting the media or city to republish it in some way to give it authenticity so they can hide behind it all. I mean, it's just complete. <sighs> I've had camera crews return over and over and over to my dangerous help. Here, here are some pictures. The Church of Scientology has gone very dark. It has lost its way. And its intention right now is not to make superhuman beings. Its intention is to vampire suction out as much money as it can to firewall itself with lawyers and PIs to prevent its ultimate downfall. 